How sweet is sweet? So today let's talk about something that comes up all the time. People always say, well, how do I know if it's sweet or if it's dry? Or what determines sweet? What determines dry? Is this too sweet? Is this not sweet enough? Well, the first thing I want to say about sweetness is it's kind of a biased thing. Like what I consider sweet, you might consider dry and vice versa. We actually had a person in one of our groups that said, no matter how dry you think this is, this is too sweet for me. And I mean, we're talking, it was like, 0 0.996 and 0 0.997 and they were saying it's too it's still too sweet for them while that's an extreme it still proves the point that one person's sweetness is another person's dryness so let's get into it now what i'm talking about is specific gravity and how it relates to perceived sweetness in the beverage specific gravity at this point is used to relay the residual sugars present in a brew not the starting sugars not the gravity or anything like that that you started with but what's left at the end or after back sweetening okay so that's an important aspect to figure out. You can put in five pounds of sugar in the beginning, but if it all ferments out and it goes to like 0 0.990, it's still dry, as opposed to if you used one pound of sugar and it stalled and it came out to 1.050, which it couldn't with one pound of sugar, but let's just say it did, that would still be very sweet, okay? So uh, as much as alcohol does play a part, the actual specific gravity reading really does determine the final sweetness based on the relative remaining sugar. Whew, try saying that three times fast. But anyway, the actual sweetness levels, I had to look this up and it was a little bit more difficult to find than I thought it should be, but I did find a couple of reliable sources, one of them being BJCP, which is kind of the beer judges guidelines and the rules that they go for beer competitions, but they also do cider and mead competitions. So I took from those. When it comes to ciders, they have five different classifications. Those are dry, medium dry, medium, medium sweet, and sweet. Now keep in mind, ciders can be carbonated, non-carbonated, that kind of thing. To be dry, it should be 0.4% residual sugar. Don't worry about that number. They did the conversion for us. This corresponds to a final specific gravity of less than 1.002. So that means anything up to 1.002 is considered dry. Now this is for judging, for competition. So take this as you will. It's a little bit of a, you know, just a a guide, if you will. It also says there is no perception of sweetness. Medium dry, which would be the next step up, uh, corresponds to a final specific gravity of 1.002 to 1.004. That's very, very tight. That's only two points. There's a hint of sweetness, but the cider is still perceived primarily as dry, also known as semi-dry, okay? Medium <laughs> is 1.004 to 1.009. These are very tight tolerances. I mean, when you think about this, this is from 1.002 to 1.009. It goes from dry to medium dry to medium already. Sweetness is now a notable component of the overall character. Very interesting. Medium sweet. This is the next to the top. Uh, final gravity of 1.09 to 1.019. Now we widen that out quite a bit. Cider is sweet, but still refreshing. Apparently being dry makes it refreshing. Also known as semi-sweet. Now they're not calling that sweet. They're saying that's semi-sweet, okay? That's the thing to remember here. They're dry, medium, dry, and medium are all considered more on the dry side. And now you're getting into the sweetness stuff. Sweet is a final gravity over 1.019. Cider has the character of a dessert wine. It must not be cloying, okay? Cloying is when it's like just, this is like sickly sweet, like cough syrup sweet, it's just gross. So that is for cider. Now, I might be tempted to throw this, but I might need it later, so I'm gonna hang on to it. Then we move on to mead. Now, mead um, has significantly different characterizations. And they actually went a little bit further here too. They gave three different types of meats. Now this, this I found interesting and it's all separated by ABVs, which we kind of knew this already, but a little bit of it might be surprising. A hydromel is an OG of 1.035 to 1.080. Keep in mind, that's not saying what the actual ABV is, but the ABV should be 3.5 to 7.5. So that means you have to have that OG in that range and end with those ABVs in order to be considered a hydromel or a session mead. A standard mead is 
1.080 to 1.120, 7.5 to 14%. So that's your standard mead. Your, most of the meads that we make are standard meads. I would argue that 7.5 though, that seems really low. That sounds like more of a hydromel session mead, but hey, this is the judge's ruling. So this is the way it is. Um, sack meads are 1.120 to 1.170. I don't know what happens if you're above 1.170. I guess it's a super sack, maybe. Um, ABV of 14 to 18%. Again, if it's over 18%, is it still not a sack mead? I would argue that it probably still is. Unless you're in Poland, then it's one of those names that I can never pronounce properly that are the super high gravity meads, except that the funny thing about those is they usually are 15 to 18% too, no matter how much honey they have in them. That's the funny thing. They end up just sweeter. Um, anyway, that I found that a little bit interesting, that if you are over 14%, it's actually considered a sack mead. So we've made quite a few sack meads without even knowing it. Who knew? But the sweetness level, they say, is depending on the final gravity. So that's where they determine that. So even in hydromel, standard, and sack meads, the sweetness is still the same, which is interesting because in cider, we saw a very tight tolerance. Wait till you get to the mead ones. Dry, they only have three categories, by the way. Dry is 0.990 to 1.010. So compared to the cider, that it, dry, medium dry, and medium are all the same thing, according to mead. Really interesting. Semi-sweet is 1.010 to 1.025. So that bumps this from like, I mean, it's just, it's crazy how different these are. And then sweet is 1.025 to 1.050. Now, my question is, what if it's below 0.990? I know it's rare, but if it was, is that still considered dry? And what if it's over 1.050? Well, my opinion, if it's over 1.050, in most cases, you know what it is? It's stalled. Although, there are times and places to make things a little bit sweeter. I found that to be very, very interesting. 1.050, I would consider to be a very sweet mead, and I like things sweet. So that was very interesting, and it gets more interesting when we go to wine. <sighs> okay, Wine Folly had a chart. I couldn't find actual numbers, like what I just found here for mead and cider. I'm sure somebody's gonna tell me, oh, it's right here. Yeah, well, my Google Foo failed me today, I guess. But Wine Folly had a chart that I had to convert. So let's just go there. Here's the chart. There's five categories. Dry is below 1.008. But if we compare that to cider, dry was 1.002. So there's a lot of range there. And dry for mead was up to 1.010. So they're different. Off dry. Well, that would be like medium dry in the cider, I guess. 1.008 to 1.012. We're still in the dry to semi-sweet range for mead here. Medium dry semi-sweet is 1.012 to 1.022, which is kind of more like the um, medium sweet. Yeah, medium dry, medium sweet. See, medium sweet cider and medium dry wine are the same gravity. This is why people get confused by this stuff. Um, and semi-sweet mead is in the same range. <laughs> then we get to semi-sweet. <laughs> semi-sweet is 1.022 to 1.045. That's semi-sweet, or medium sweet, I'm sorry. Medium sweet is 1.022 to 1.045. And that is, compared to cider, uh, cider is 0.09 to 0.019 versus 0.022 to 0.045. Wow, that's a big discrepancy. But then when we get to, see, we don't have a medium sweet, we have a semi-sweet. That's 1.010 to 1.025. Wow, that's crazy. So they don't correspond at all. And then we have sweet. Now you would think sweet across the board should all be the same, right? Well, 1.045 for wine, up to 1.0550 for mead. Don't know what happens over 1.0550. And sweet for cider is anything over 1.019. No wonder why people get this confusing. Another chart that I found online. Now this actually seems to work all around. This is not just for wine, this is for beverages that are fermented in the home or commercially. This one was nice and simple. Dry is 1.000 or below. Medium dry was 1.000 to 1.010. Medium sweet was 1.010 to 1.020. Sweet 
was 1.020 to 1.030, and dessert was 1.030 and up. <laughs> to me, that exemplifies the simplicity that these things should have, but people being people and organizations being organizations, everybody's got to have their own way of doing it. But how do you determine what way to go for you? Well, here's the thing. These are just names. The only reason why these names are necessary is to be able to convey to another person, okay? And like I said, everybody's biased. But if you really want to go by it, well, the way we usually say is like, if I say, oh, this is pretty sweet, I'm usually talking about that 1.020 to 1.030 range as far as pretty sweet. If I say it's very sweet, then it's probably above 1.030. So we're probably closer to the mead designations overall because they're saying dry is 990 to 1.010. Yeah, even a 1.004 or 1.0, that's still going to taste pretty dry to me. Semi-sweet is 1.010 to 1.025. I would have to agree. That's, that's semi-sweet. And then sweet would be above 1.025. I spewed a lot of numbers in the last 11 minutes and 37 seconds, which is probably shorter because I have to edit this. That's what the counter over there says. But the basics of it are... Sweet is relative to your own taste, okay? If you want to create something that is sweet, you probably want to be 1.020 or higher as your final gravity. If you want something that's dry, you probably want to be closer to that 1.000 range. That's the best final endpoints I can give you. But at the end of the day, it really comes down to what you like, what you enjoy, and the people that you're sharing your beverage with enjoy. And that's why when we sweeten beverages, lately for the last year or so, we don't actually measure how much sugar we're putting in. I estimate, but we measure the specific gravity at the end so we can tell you how much gravity there is so you can recreate that for yourself. And that will also tell you something. If we make something that is whatever the gravity is, 1.020, and we say, this is sweet, we like this, you can try that and do the exact same thing we did, get it to 1.020, and if you say, whoa, that's way too sweet, you know next time we say we sweeten to 1.020 that that's too sweet for you. So you can back off 10, 15 points and try there. That's a really great way for us to give you kind of a, a concrete number to work towards, a concrete um, step to get to, rather than saying we added a half a pound of sugar. Because here's the thing. After you ferment, and after you rack, and after you do everything, that one gallon batch is a different amount. And sometimes it could be two thirds of a gallon, three quarters of a gallon, uh, almost a full gallon sometimes. So if you add half a pound of sugar to that, well, in the lower amount batch, it's gonna be much sweeter than in the higher amount batch. So the half pound of sugar is almost meaningless. I'd rather know that, wow, that half pound brought that to 1.012. That way, if you have half a gallon, Two thirds of a gallon, a full gallon, you can aim for that specific gravity. Motion detected at the carport. There's somebody at our carport. You can aim for that specific. Motion detected at the front door. There's somebody at our front door. It's probably a delivery. Anyway, you can aim for that specific gravity, and that way you can have a consistent reading and a consistent target that we had too, rather than relying on volumes. Hopefully that made sense. If you have questions about what is sweet or how sweet something is, please ask away in the comments below. We try to get to all your comments as quickly as possible. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.